you very much. Thank you. Um, welcome, everybody, everybody, to GTA Titan Vice. Um, as Paul has said, uh, I'll give you a little rundown. But first, I would like to introduce my commentators, because you can see I'm by myself in, uh, you know, physically. But uh, I have two commentators with me. I have MHMD. Say hi. Hi. And uh, uh, yeah, oh, I, I have the world record for this, by the way. Oh yeah, all right, but, uh, fair enough. Yeah, good. I'm second. I'm, guys, I'm second place. I'm second place. Just thought I'd sort it out there. And I'm taller than MHMD as well, so let's keep that in there. All right. Uh, anyway, 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 we, we've got a job to do, boys. Anyway, so uh, my other very special commentary, not MH, the other guy. Say hi. Hi. Yeah. I made this madness. Yeah. Uh, so he's actually this is Rob, otherwise known as Dinosaur Bites, and he's the developer of this mod. Um, so he's not much of a speed gamer, but he's uh, you know enjoys watching me play it, and uh, yeah, he he coded this whole thing. So big shout out to him. We'll get more into it later. So before we get started, uh, what is Titan Vice? Basically, if you saw my tough and run from winter uh, last year, it's very similar. So it's like a Kaizo version of GTA Vice City. So it's like um, you know all the missions are, like coded to be extremely difficult. You have to use like a lot of like really niche game mechanics to kind of get through on a consistent basis. Um, I have a load of set of saves just in case I goof anything because deaths are like pretty much, you know, a death sentence, you know, excuse the pun. Um, so yeah, it's, yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so it, it's absolute madness, let me tell you. Uh, I should be fine for the most part, but you know, I'm, uh, you know, supposed to run tomorrow and now I've got basically had like two hours notice to be like, yo, you're going today. So if I'm a bit shaky, I apologize. Um, yeah, without going too much deeper into it, we'll start the run. Uh, just know that if we don't go too much into like deep Vice City mechanics, that's because we kind of need to explore like what the mod changes. So it's like you know kind of two different commentaries running at the same time. But a lot of the big strats that we'll we'll talk about as we go because they apply to Vanilla Vice City as well. All right, you all ready? All right, smash in. Let's do it. Three, two, one, go. So. As you can see when we start off, uh, there are some very different things. A bus just exploded. Uh, that's, you know, it's normal. Don't worry about that. Um, it's going to block my path, but luckily for me, I'm an absolute legend, and I've, uh, I'm, I'll find a way around it. I'm sure we can figure it out together as a team. Uh, so, yeah, and there's also slightly buggy snow physics um, that's been added. Uh, you might think it's Florida, so why on earth is it snowing? I don't really have an answer for you. Uh, it shouldn't be, but, you know, with the weather in Sweden recently, it's all a bit up in the air at this point. Uh, one thing to think about is that um, snow actually does affect um, like the physics and stuff quite a lot. Um, as you can see, I'm sort of slowly gliding through because if I were to hit the brakes going 70 miles an hour in snow, I'd just start flying about everywhere and that would be a bit embarrassing. So as we go along, um, there, a lot of the strats are going to be quite similar to what you've seen in Vice City. But as we go later on, unless you watch GTA Vice City speedruns like 15 million years ago, then you're not going to know a lot of the routes because we're basically going to be doing a lot of boomer strats. Um, the reason we're going to be doing all boomer strats is because, like, in like 2014, we switched over to using a Japanese version of the game, and we did like all of our strats based on that. We don't need to go into that because we're not playing Japanese. But all that you need to know is that like all the fastest routes on the international version, which is what this bot, uh, this mod actually works for, is you know like mega ancient stuff. So we'll be basically using like the GTA Vice City like world record route from like 2013 in order to actually make any progress in this mod. Uh, yeah, so coming up, uh, these missions are fairly simple. We'll just talk about like the changes as we go. Uh, but MH, do you want to talk about you know some kind of like general Titan Vice mechanics, like what general stuff is different, um, you know, sort of rather than mission to mission? If we've got him somewhere, if not, he's just abandoned me. Fair enough. I can't believe he's left us. I know it's just tragic, isn't does it? This, does this thing not work? Oh, he, he's here. He's here. Oh, MH, help me out here, brother. Help me out. Why is this, why is this, thing, why is this thing not working? Okay. Anyway. Um, yeah, so if you play this game as if it's like a normal Vice City speedrun, then you're going to die a whole bunch. So uh, you need more guns. You need to play a bit more safe. Uh, and you might need to pick up some health and armor. Um, the fact that it's snowing sometimes doesn't help. Um, so, yeah, you know, enemies have more guns. There, are, there might be more enemies in some places. Um, that's like the very brief version of like what's what's doing this mod, but it's it's it goes a bit deeper than that, you know. Yeah, it's even designed to troll speedrunners, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like even silliest things, like the the actual traffic has been completely changed, so the the drivers are a lot more um, like aggressive in a lot of places. So you'll see a lot more like angry drivers and stuff. 
And here is where we'll see the first sort of major change. So these guys here, uh, these guys actually have uh, M4s, which is great. Uh, so if we were to sort of come along and go like, oh, Mercedes, we're going to drop you off at the strip club, uh, they would just kill us instantly. So we're going to take a little second and uh, kill these instead. We're going to grab their really overpowered guns, and we're going to finish the first mission. Um, so something that's very important is obviously if you give enemies... Hello, officer. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, if you give enemies really powerful guns and then you kill them and steal them, we also have very powerful guns, right? So it's sort of like a counterbalance, you know? Nothing's broken if everyone's broken. So we steal those M4s. I'm going to use them for like a lot of the early missions because you can just absolutely smash people in the early game by just using an M4. Uh, I am going to quickly switch my controls in a second. I forgot to uh, set two very important binds. Give me one second here. Uh, I forgot to add, so Q and E um, actually switched my weapon back and forth, which was a bit silly of me, I'm not going to lie. Uh, but that's all right. Fixed. There we go. Uh, there are going to be some bits later where, like, my mouse scrolling ability is probably gonna, not going to be super good. And if I don't select the exact weapon that I need, I'm just going to get absolutely nuked. So it's important that I fix that, even if it costs me a few seconds. So second mission. Uh, this one, the, the first half of the mission isn't particularly different. Uh, when we go to the Malibu, there's usually two guards that wait there. They're not usually aggressive onto you unless you have, like, a wanted level or something. Uh, I do have a wanted level, but regardless of whether I did or I didn't, they're going to be aggroed onto me anyway. The only thing that can kind of mess me up is they might shoot my tires, which is not good. But, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, all good. Um, and then the other thing is that the chef is in a slightly different position. So usually we'd fling ourselves down the alleyways to my left. Uh, but we're not going to do that because he's actually hidden behind this wall. So instead we're going to go down this alleyway and do him that way. See you later, sunshine. Nice and easy. We're going to grab the phone. And this is where it's going to change. So there are three chefs that chase you. Two of them have stubby shotguns that will pretty much insta-kill me. So I need to turn around, kill them both as soon as I can, get running. This guy only has a pistol, so I don't care about it. And the chef is driving off with Lance's car. So now I need to snipe him. Got him. That's a hard snipe, by the way, especially when you have shaky hands. Because mm. I am petrified, boys and girls. Let me tell you, I am. Woo, all these spotlights in my face, I am bricking it. Anyway, so hit that, hit that shot, thank God, because everyone would have absolutely bodied me if I didn't. Um, and now we can go and get Lance and drive away. So yeah, basically, like as you can imagine, some... Um, like, some objectives have been, like, completely rewritten. So instead of the tutorial in the Vi vanilla Vice City game where you'd go with Lance in his car and drive and, like, learn how to buy guns and stuff, we're, like, obviously playing, like, a Kaizo mod, so we don't need to learn how to do that. So instead, there's that whole thing with the chef stealing Lance's car. But, uh, you know, if we're fast enough, we can snipe him out of the way. Otherwise, we have to chase him all across the map, and that's not good. Uh, MH, do you want to talk a bit about what I'm going to do here for the Jury Fury setup? Because uh, this is where it gets a bit complicated. <coughs> Yeah, so um, basically what Eben's about to do is he's going to do a big old setup to start the Jury Fury mission twice, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, so that's, that's, a, that's a glitch, uh, a pretty big glitch. And normally you can't start missions twice, but if you manipulate the state of the game, you know, there's like a, there's a, a variable that kind of determines whether you're like considered to be on a mission or uh, not on a mission. So right now you can see like the L icon on the map. That's like kind of the, like that's the mission. That's that's where the mission's at. So that means that you can start a mission. That's kind of one easy way to tell. And if you, like what he did just there, he used the vigilante mission and he saved a replay over excuse the same me, icon. Buddy. Oh, excuse me, oh, sorry, <laughs> yeah, uh, thank you. Sorry, go ahead and make Charles in a bit of and traffic it, there. Yeah, I see, I see. And, uh, what the save icon does does it temporarily like sets you to be on a mission and then not on a mission so if you play, and you can pick up things in replay by the way <laughs> just there's, a, there's a million things to explain it's not an easy one yeah <laughs> yeah so if you start the vigilante side mission as you're like picking up the save icon and you start the mission it briefly uh oh. sets the mission flag to on and then it goes off again then you can start other missions during that mission and then with a phone call, which also... Uh, I also forgot to set my hold call key, so you've got plenty of time while I set this up. Give me one sec. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but go ahead. Call, go phone ahead. calls also do that. So so if you're on the vigilante side mission and you have a phone call ringing and then you cancel the vigilante side mission, then you can start other missions during the phone call. And then if you cancel the phone call after starting the mission once, then you can start the mission a second time. Yeah. 
and that's going to do some cool stuff once uh, this setup gets set up. Yeah, I, uh, I intentionally, you know, gave MH and a lot of time by intentionally beefing this. Uh, basically, all that I needed was I needed a certain key setup, but I don't, I didn't have it. Uh, so I need to go and do the setup again, but it's fine. I can just use this Haxi instead of Vidwanti. It's not a big deal. Yeah, in full motion this time. Yeah, exactly. Um, so you yeah, can so kind of hopefully see what's going on here. Yeah, exactly. It's 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 difficult to sort of you know do it all at the same time because there's a lot of things going on. Uh, but a sort of yeah TLDR as I mate said is this always going to be done for like a nice easy setup to dupe Jury Fury? Uh, don't worry about that sound. <laughs> that's uh, that's the bonus taxi mission inside Titan Vice. Uh, there we go. Now we have a call. Perfect. So yeah, that was all I set up so that I have um, basically like a glitched phone call that will allow me to. I'll, I'll start the jury for your mission, then I will cancel the phone call or answer it or whichever, it like, doesn't really matter. And then I will, uh, I need to go and remake the close replay as well. Um, and then once I've like done everything like that, I will um, go and start jury fury and start jury fury, cancel the call, and then I can actually start it a second time. And jury fury has like a weird thing where you have to like destroy two jurors' cars or like damage them. And if you start the mission twice, um, then basically what's going to happen is the cars are going to like flip on top of each other and it's basically going to allow me to like uh, like the, f the cars flip they damage on top of each other like because they hit each other when they land and then they flip over and they both get damaged and then the mission just passes instantly so yeah it's tricky to say but as you can see here i'm just doing a bunch of weird flippy stuff start the mission a second time so there's two cars two guys getting run over two hammers everything like that and then, so we've just started the mission. Remember Giorgio? Remember he's in and that's the mission pass, just like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be optimal to get onto that little moped before this cutscene starts, but like, it's already tight as it is in the normal game, but in Titan Vice, it's like, it's way harder. a little bit by, uh, by the cars. So it's like, yeah, it's extremely hard. Yeah, it's like, you have like a matter of frames of leeway to get there, even with like optimal movement. So I'm actually gonna take this car. Um, in this particular scenario, like it doesn't really matter what car I get. Um, I need to retake that call that I canceled just a second ago. But as you can see in this game, in, in the mod, um, I can just take a call and immediately press F to skip it like it's like I'm playing San Andreas. Uh, so that's another benefit of the mm -hmm. mod. That's one good thing. Uh, usually in Vice City, if you were to like play it normally, like boot up on Steam or whatever, um, you have to listen to the phone calls in their entirety. So even if you use like a glitch to, to like, cancel the call, um, it will just make you retake it like a second time. You know, you like you have to listen to it in order for it to like count as taken, and you need to take phone calls to progress. So yeah, uh, this is a bit chaotic here. Uh, there's usually guys like throwing Molotovs and stuff at you. He doesn't seem to be this time, which is actually quite nice. Of course, the one time I'm talking about the chaos, this just looks completely normal. Um, but yeah, basically the idea is—is is that on fire? I can't see. Yeah, it's good. Um, basically, the, the change of this mission is that um, there's a big gate in front of you. That gate usually isn't there. And it's supposed to prevent you um, from going around like the back because the gate, it's also gated off on the back side. Um, and it, you know, Rob's original intention was to gate you off so you couldn't just shoot, um, you know, like the vans and blow them up instantly that you can in the vanilla game. But Rob forgot that there's another glitch that you can use, um, which basically allows you to poke like your weapon through any surface, including a gate. So if we stand at the right distance away from the gate, we can just poke our shotgun through and just blow them up anyway. So, unlucky, Rob. Clearly not good enough at my job. Yeah, evidently, yeah. So, yeah, so now we're on to Cortez's missions. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and go ahead and start them. Uh, so that was the Corte Cortez phone call, basically telling us like, yo, come and see us, but we're already here, so nice and easy. Um, I don't think there's too much to explain to this mission. Um, we're gonna use the M4 to go and kill Gonzalez. Usually you would like run down and chainsaw him, but his guards have assault rifles and they do a ton of damage. So the easiest way is to abuse, and this isn't a glitch, it's like an in-game mechanic, where if you shoot somebody in like a limb, so like a, you know, an arm, a leg, like anywhere but the torso basically, um, you have a certain percentage chance to critical hit them, which means that they like die instantly. Um, so we're basically going to abuse that. We're going to go to Gonzalez, and even though he has quite a lot of health, unless we get really unlucky, hello sir, talking about the angry drivers there that just like pull in front of you. I don't even think he was angry, I think he just pulled, oh, hello. Traffic is mental in this, you know, typical American traffic, what can we say? <laughs> These drivers, they don't check their mirrors, man. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to illegally undertake and they don't let me. That is so stupid. What were they thinking? 
Um, but yeah, so we're going to shoot this guy with the M4 that we picked up from the first um, first segment. And yeah, unless we get mega unlucky, we'll just crit him and kill him like pretty much instantly. So should hopefully go well. The game gives you the chainsaw out because you're intended to use it. We will use the chainsaw later on, but not quite yet. So there you go. We shot him in the arm and killed him pretty much instantly. So usually um, you would have to use the pain spray here to... It's basically like the pain spray tutorial, right? To show you like, this is how you get rid of wanted levels. And then the mission passes once you've got rid of your wanted level. So we used to use strategies that would, you know, if you had a two star wanted level, which is what the vanilla game gives you, um, we would use certain strategies like cop bribes to get rid of it while we're driving back so we can skip doing the pain spray stuff. Uh, here's a cop bribe. And then we're also gonna play a close replay there. And that just instantly passes the mission. Um, that's because we get three stars and we pick up the bribe, which takes away one star. And then uh, closed replays have a million benefits. Um, one of them is removing two stars. Um, so that's not like anything to do with the fact that I picked it up in a replay. It's just purely the sense that if you pick up clothes and you have a two star wanted level or less, um, then yeah. you'll just get rid of the wanted level. So, yeah. Uh, MH, you're welcome to talk about yeah. closed replays for a bit because we're obviously going to abuse them quite a lot in a few minutes. Okay. I will also mention that uh, all the little police bribe locations, they're. Uh, I think all of them are changed from the original game. Yeah. So, yeah, you got like, yeah, you got to know where they all are. Yeah. Um, but yeah, close replays. It's another thing that you can trigger if you have a replay saved over a close pickup. You can change clothes anywhere. <laughs> but like the way that changing clothes this game works is like, um, and I may get some flack from the uh, those who understand this stuff better. But the, the games. Um, it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but like I think what it does, it, it it deletes the old Tommy and then it creates a new Tommy with the the new clothes. So and not only that, it like like that has a side effect of like it, it takes away control and like gives it back to you. So like if you play a close replay before a cutscene, then you'll find yourself uh, able to move in that cutscene. And uh, you know you're, if you're falling down from like a height and you play a close replay, then you're like. Uh, Velocity, like falling down, like you're gonna take less fall damage if you play it near the ground, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, has so, a million different benefits. Long and short of it is, yeah, they're just super versatile, super useful. So yeah. Yeah. I actually uh, took a little detail there to grab body armor. Uh, this is why, because these guys all have assault rifles, and as you can see, my health is just getting deleted. Uh, oh god. Okay, did I get it? I did. Okay, good. Uh, I'm on fire, so all good. Oh. I'm on, I'm riding away on fire. See you later. Uh, oh, no, my boy. bike is genuinely on fire. Lot, dude. Yeah, mm, that's unlucky. Uh, car park nearby. Uh, yeah, so as you can see, like if I didn't get armor there, I was 100% dead. So I'm glad I made I made that decision. Because um, yeah, I was I was done there. Those guys absolutely nuked me. Uh, if I was doing like PB attempts, I wouldn't grab armor. I'd just risk the coin flip to see if I die or not. But yeah, in a marathon, it doesn't make any sense. Um, in particular missions as well, it happened with the last mission um, where. You know, we were talking about getting rid of wanted levels. Um, it's not actually like mandatory usually to get rid of your wanted level for this mission. You can just go back and finish it. Um, but Rob is an evil little man, and uh, he made it so some missions, if you go there without a wanted level, uh, sorry, with a wanted level, you'll fail the mission because like, you know, you brought the cops with you. Obviously, they know that you're doing illegal stuff now, so mission failed, which makes perfect, you know, perfectly logical sense. But also, you know, screw you, Rob. That's all I'm saying. I even telegraphed it. I don't know what you're complaining about. Yeah, I telegraphed it by writing like a single line on the brief, which I definitely read when I'm playing this game. 100%. <laughs> it's not I'd... my fault if you don't read. Yeah, I'm true. I, I can't read, so it's all good. Yeah. I would be offended if I could read. All right. So when I went to that multi-story car park earlier, I made a little detour. Um, and I made a replay. Um, usually this has an assault oh, rifle because this is quite a big shootout section. Uh, the mod gives us a camera this time. That's our weapon <laughs> of choice. So I'm just going to go ahead and not pick it up because uh, it's not particularly useful to me. Hmm. It doesn't do any damage. Yeah. Yeah. It's something to shoot with, as it said. Yes. Yeah, and you can do shoots with cameras, you know? That's technically incorrect. Um, yeah, so the assault rifle has been moved. It's actually right there where I picked it up. Um, I wouldn't usually grab it uh, in a run attempt again, but we're going to be safe. So I'm going to make a close replay here. Same reason as before. We're going to use it in a lot of different places. And uh, my health is kind of low, uh, but it is a health pickup on the way. Um, and this is going to be the sort of like first auto scroller of the game. Uh, if you don't know what I mean by auto scroller, it basically means like the mission's on a timer, and as long as we do everything that we need to do, there's no real way to speed it up until the end. Um, so all we're going to be doing is we're just going to be killing a bunch of guys like on a timer, basically. 
um, which is going to kill them as soon as they spawn. They do have buff weapons and stuff, so it is a little chaotic, but it should be fine. Uh, with that being said, Polister or you whoever's yeah, good. still Polister, good, you're still here. No um, yeah, arise. read some donations, go for it. I'm still messages. here indeed. We have uh, $25 from Jay Treyu saying, good luck everyone, much love. We also have $15 from Damon8 saying, hi English Ben and Joshimas, good luck with the run. And please. Of course, Josh gets us out. He's not even here. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> the, the, the donation continues. Please don't burn KZ through too much. Smiley face. I'll do my best. Uh, last one here $12 from Anonymous saying, hello, crowd. Say something, crowd. Come on. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, back to you, Ben. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so we're going to grab as much ammo as we can. As you can see, these guys have pretty beefy weapons, so... Um, and also, uh, Diaz's health is like half by default. I don't know if you guys read the little text on the side, because I don't. But it said, uh, Diaz got a boo-boo on his knee, so he's feeling pretty delicate. And that's the reason, that's the reason as to why he's got low health, bless him. So, we've got to do a, you know, an extra good job of defending him. Um, right, so, uh, MH, do you want to talk about the, uh, the sort of strat that we're going to do at the end of this mission? Regarding the close replay? While I nuke these last guys? Yeah, so, uh... Yeah, well, these guys have a ton of health, so you just crit them, and that bypasses them. But, um, yeah, so you're going to see, uh, so something's going to happen, and uh, they're going to try and get away with it, and you're going to go after them. But, if you can move in the cutscene, you can get a lot closer to them before they get too far. Uh, as you can see here, yes. On goes Tommy. No, you don't, Sunshine. Give me that brief, Dennis. Thank you, thank you. I'm gonna do the same here as well. So Tommy just doesn't want to sit in cutscenes. What is your name? Yeah, Shut up, Diaz. See you later. Go, oh! Yeah. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I deserve that to be fair. It's all good. We're all good. <laughs> Hello officers. See you later. Yeah, doing that little yeah, movement that, there is particularly mission, risky. So. Yeah, I passed the mission. Uh, but in that cutscene I do technically still have the three stars, so that's why that cop just was not very happy with me. Um, but yeah, so it basically allows us to grab that briefcase before he drives off in the cutscene. Uh, now, first out of bounds, and probably the only... No, there's, actually there's two out of bounds. Um, go up here. I was supposed to zip through. It's alright, we've got plenty of time here. Um, basically the idea is, is that you go up into this like certain corner here, you line yourself up, and uh, I swear it might sound like a big coat, but I swear it's harder in this mod. There we go. And uh, basically the idea is is that um, the game has like certain safe spots where it's going to put you um, if you fall out of bounds. So that's what I basically did there. I fell out of bounds and the game was like, oh no, Tommy's in like a weird position. We don't know where to put him. So it has like certain checkpoints, like safe zones where it puts him. And it just so happens that the safe zone for where I fall out of bounds happens to be on the other side of the locked gate. Um, so usually you would have to take that phone call to unlock that gate. Uh, but I've already taken it like on the way to starting the mission already. So it doesn't save that much time, you know, only like 20, 30 seconds or so, but it looks cool. So, yeah. Very nice. Uh, this next mission, so we're starting doing business with Diaz now. Yeah, the snow is back, so you'll, still me, you'll see me slipping and sliding about. It's not too bad when you're in a car. Um, the bikes are usually um, where it's more problematic. Um, but this first mission for Diaz, um, we're going to be doing a very similar thing. Uh, we're going to be, just before a cutscene starts, we're going to play a closed replay, which gives us control. And then uh, we're going to steal the car. Uh, that Basically, the idea of this mission is that you're supposed to like chase after a guy on a rooftop, and then he gets into a car and drives away. And you're supposed to chase him to his location, which is on Prawn Island, which is like all the way at the top of the map. Uh, but instead, if we're fast enough, um, we're going to actually jump down, gain control in the cutscene, steal the car that we're supposed to be chasing, and then drive him to his destination. Um, so I'm sure like MH can kind of give you like a play-by-play -play as we do it. Um, I do do it slightly different to you. I do it more of a safe way, MH. Um, just to kind of, you know, I do it like a mega boom away. But it's all the same stuff, basically. All right, all right, all right let's take a look. So yeah, first things first is you do a little close replay here so you can... Uh, set it up nice and easy in the cutscene here. Yeah. You steal the car, um, and yeah, basically if that's the guy you're supposed to chase, but he gets in the car like as your passenger, so you, you can you can take him there yeah. uh, instead of having to wait forever. And there's also all these guys chasing you and they're shooting at you, so you gotta get around that. Yeah. So 
how it works in vanilla, like it's slightly different in the mod because for some reason you don't have to like check all these boxes. I don't know exactly how it works, but in vanilla, um, which like for all intents and purposes, like makes it easier to explain. Um, usually the guy would try and get back in the car and he would try and hijack you because he gets in the passenger side and then hijacks away from you. Uh, this is just more cutscene movement, by the way. It's only a little thing. Um, but if you're moving and you've blocked the side that he is trying to get into, which is the, the driver's side, he'll get in the passenger side. And then because you're already moving, he can't switch to the driver's seat. So instead, he just gets in the passenger seat with you, and then he's just stuck. So we can just drive him to his destination. Uh, this is more of just the outer bound stuff. Uh, it's very similar. So there's a blockade that says that we can't go to the other island. Uh, but because of the fact that we fell out of bounds there, because this particular car has a property which means that it like doesn't go through the water properly, so we just go straight through the water and start falling out of bounds. Uh, this is old strats, actually. I need to be going this way. Uh, also, if your car sets on fire like that, uh, you can just use close replays to put them out for, you know. Yeah. Reason number 700 million why uh, close replays are really overpowered. Um, but yeah, so we're going to take a different helicopter. Usually we'd grab the Vice City News helicopter, which is what I was going for, sort of muscle memory. Uh, but it actually is replaced with a little moped in this game, uh, in this mod, so... Luckily... You're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome, yeah. <laughs> luckily there is a, a VCPD helicopter here, which is you know, basically the same thing. We're just going to do a minor little detail for it. Um, so, helicopters are like mega useful uh, in this game, in this mod, like pretty much in Vice City in general. Especially around like this time of the game, because this point in the game is where I'm going to start unlocking like the island to my right, which is the western island. Currently, we only have access to the Eastern Island and these like middle ones. Uh, but as soon as the game sort of unlocks that main like island with downtown and everything for you, it starts like taking you there and back constantly to give you like you know give you a bit of time to get used to the area right by like driving around it. Um, but obviously, the fastest way to get across these islands, if you're you know going from like ocean across the ocean, is just instead to just fly over it. So yeah, makes more sense to just grab a helicopter and fly. Now, um, as you can see, I don't know if you can quite tell because it's kind of against the blue, but if you give me a second, uh, the helicopter health is what really is massive in this mod. What's might be what? easier to see there. It almost goes off the screen. Uh, that's for a particular reason, because this mission is stupidly hard in this mod. Um, I'm going to do some things to make it much more trivial, but it's not easy by any means. Uh, so, MH, you want to talk about uh, turret mode manipulation, which I'm going to do now? <clears throat> yeah, so yet another thing you can do with close replay. Um, when you you play a close replay and then you kind of aim when you're in turret mode, and then suddenly you, your firing rate of your gun is like the same as your frame rate. So when you shoot, it's like you're you're shooting 30 bullets per second, which is really crazy fast. And with this gun, like it kills pretty much everybody in one hit, except from like bosses and stuff. So yeah, like 30 bullets per second with this, it's just going to be an absolute massacre. Uh, so those guys all have M60s, but I also have an M60, and I'm just going to yeah, pre-fire all these guys as best as I can. Uh, very important I blow up these barrels here, because there's a chance. Uh, I mean, I guess in this mod with this route, it's not actually uh, something that's going to happen. Um, but usually in the vanilla game, it's a good habit to get into, because you can get shot through the walls, and they can blow up the barrels, which would kill you. It's not particularly good. Uh, so yeah, all these guys, just going to spawn kill them best I can. Uh, See, so yeah, these guys all have M60s, so it's very important that I don't leave too many of them alive. Um, I killed them in a particular order. Sorry, Tom, I get out of the way. Uh, I killed them in a particular order uh, because those guys on the basketball court, they don't like fully render in, depending on where Lance is, he sort of like sways back and forth. Um, so like wh when you have the opportunity to kill these guys, you should as quickly as you can. And then, uh, MH, do you want to talk about uh, killing Lance? So I'll, I'll go for it, I'm pretty confident, but it's uh, a soft lock if I beef it, right. so we'll see. Yeah, so <clears throat> normally you're not able to kill Lance in this because you're in first-person mode and you're, like, the, the uh, okay. where you can aim is limited. But, like, in this glitchy mode, you can actually kill Lance. So there's no check for failing the mission of Lance dies because that's not supposed to happen anyway. Thank you, thank um, you. But you can just kill him. You kill him, he's dead. Um, you fall out of the heli, you steal the helicopter from Ooh. the dead Lance, and then Lance comes back to life. Yeah. And uh, this... Like, this whole thing of, like, stealing the helicopter by shooting Lance out of it, it wouldn't actually save that much time in vanilla, um, because you can just sprint all the way up to the building and uh, grab the briefcase in, like, a matter of seconds. But in Titan, there's two problems with that. Uh, the first one is that all the guys have such disgusting weapons, they kill you instantly if you walk in there, so you'd have to, like, you know, fight as you go along. Um, and the second one is that, uh, the, as you saw, the briefcase was in a moved position. It's actually on the roof. 
and you need to like use something to get up there. So you're intended to take a PCJ, which is parked on Pawn Island, drive it up the stairs, up into up onto the roof, and then use that as like a building block to get yourself over. But that's obviously fairly slow. So stealing Lance's helicopter and flying all the way up there skips that entire second half. And uh, yeah, speaking of more helicopters, uh, making stuff really easy. Uh, so usually in, in the Vice City, you can just drive over here and steal this uh, boat really easily. Uh, Rob decided to put a uh, gate there to stop you just driving in, but because we got that helicopter from earlier, I can just uh, park it over there, steal it anyway. Nice and easy. Yeah, bo mover stress for the win again. Yeah, exactly. I don't even know why I bother. <laughs> <laughs> we'll always fi find a way around it, you know? It's never a, uh, never a way around. As you can see, there's a big sunk sunken ship there. Uh, this mod changes a lot of things, not just emissions. That's not usually there in the original game. Uh, but it's used as some of the side missions. Unfortunately, we won't be seeing them, because obviously this is sort of any percent. Um, now, we've stolen the fastest boat for Diaz. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to park it in a particular position. Uh, so this is also very boomer in terms of the strats. Uh, we used to just use a helicopter to do all this, but it doesn't quite work out for Titan Vice. Um, but basically, the idea is, is that, obviously, if you just park that boat at the jetty, we're going to use it for the next mission. But if we park that boat and sort of move it out the way, then the, then the game will just spawn another boat, which we're then going to use for the mission that will then despawn at the end. So essentially, we can keep a copy of the boat, the really fast boat, and then still have one for the mission as normal. So you see, like, there is... I'll show you in a second. Uh, we go through, and we're going to get given this boat here that's right in front of us. But then we still have the other one that I've just we parked a second ago, because we're going to use that to go to Cortez after this mission. Uh, so you can see it behind me there, that's the copy of the boat that I, uh, that I stole. So this mission sort of is in two halves. Uh, the first one, there isn't really anything to it. Um, there is a guy here, so this is sort of like a, you know, to stop people being fast, but it doesn't kind of work. Uh, so there's a guy there on the right hand side, and as you can see, he shoots me with a very overpowered weapon, but I just go around him. And then there is a guy here as well, and it says stop you taking like the fast route, and he shoots at you. Uh, but as we have basically infinite health, as you can see, because we can just keep playing the close replay to heal our car, we can just drive past him and skip that entire section anyway. And then we're going to get control here, and it's very important that as soon as I get control, I'm going to spawn in, I'm immediately going to activate turret mode manipulation again, and instantly kill these guys. Because these gunners have M60s, and they would kill me instantly if I didn't kill them first. So yeah, very similar thing here where like... <coughs> You know, you have the really overpowered weapons, so do they, so it's it's insta-kill or be insta-kill. Those are your choices. So yeah. Uh, we destroy those two boats. Yeah. Um, we've got a bit of time to chill. Um, sorry, MH, what were you going to say? Yeah, I was just going to say, like, you can kind of close pre-play your way through all the damage, but yeah. if they if they do enough damage in between your, your spam, then you're going to die anyway, so you really need to take them out. Yeah, exactly. Um, you, you can sort of, you know, like, when I say infinite health, it's not infinite, but it's like a way to, like, keep healing your car. But, uh, sorry, your boat in this case. But it is possible for them to out-damage you if you get unlucky enough. Um, so, yeah. So, we've killed everyone that is going to attack us. Um, so now we're just going to be slowly taking the boat back to the end. So, Paul Lister, any donations, anything to say? Take it away, buddy. Absolutely. We have quite a few here. Go we have it. $50 from Shoshi saying, Cheers to all GTA speedrunners. Love watching you all. We also have $25 from a Try Harder saying, Shoutouts to English Ben and crew, making sure ESA always has a great serving of GTA. Thank you. Glad to have you on the first day. Good luck with the run. Thank you very much. Finally, $13 from a Potato. And it says, Potato. Very insightful. Thank, thank you very, very much, much, Potato. And thank you for your donations, friends. Back to you. Thank you very much. So as you see here, we're doing the exact same thing. Uh, we get towards the end of the mission, and uh, we just gain control in the cutscene. It says, like, see you around, see you around Tommy, and we're just, we're just off. So we're just off into the sunset. Um, so um, we're going to grab, uh, we're going to pull up at Cortez's dock here, and um, we're going to switch to the PCJ, which we're going to use for this next mission. And uh, this mission has sort of like um, a number of different um, things that are different with it. The number one thing is that it doesn't heal you. So usually because you deal with the army in this mission, uh, the game would usually heal you by default. It would set your health and armor to 200. Uh, sorry, like 100 each. Uh, the mod doesn't do that because why would it be nice? So we're just going with the 68 health that we have. It's probably enough. Oh, hey, tanks. Anyone get that reference? Anyone? Since everyone likes to talk about Joshua so much, you know. 
<laughs> there you go. <laughs> Even the developer can't stop talking about Joshimus. Nah, there is a cool, a lot of like cool little Easter eggs like that in there. Um, yeah, so we're going to take the PCJ. Uh, it seems kind of slow, um, but there is a good reason why we're going to take it. Um, so we're going to slowly make our way over there in the snow. And um, basically, this mission, uh, we're going to steal a tank from the army, which seems like a very impossible task, especially with 68 health. Um, and it is a lot more difficult in this mod, but it's not because of the fact that you steal a tank. That bit is still very trivial, because the way the game's programmed, it's very easy to like abuse the, the army's AI. Um, but what is different is that the, the garage where you're supposed to take it is actually a completely different garage, and it's actually way further. It's actually all the way on the other side of the map. Um, so we're going to basically um, steal a tank, drive it to a much further destination, and uh, it has a detonation timer. So it like, has like a self-destruct timer. And yeah, so it's, it's a lot tighter in terms of um, like the drive that we have to do. And also in, in, the, uh, in the snow with five stars, it's not ideal. Um, so, we're going to park our PCJ in front. These guys are like, hmm, there's a PCJ in front of us. Let's just abandon and unlock the doors to the tank. So, thanks for the tank, I guess, and off we go. Still in the tank, very trivial. But now, we've got to get all the way onto the eastern island with these five stars. And uh, we're going to drive across a bridge. And the bridge can, you know, it's, it can fit the tank over there. But uh, if you hit anything, you would be surprised. But the tank can actually flip really easily. And if you flip or anything like that, then you just go flying into the ocean, and that's uh, no bueno. So, yeah. Uh, while I do this very death-defying stunt, MH, do you want to talk about um, the Cherry Poppers replay and what we're going to use that for later? And I guess why it's used. Yeah, so we see the replay over like a property purchase icon. Uh, you can't buy properties, but you can buy safe houses, but you can't buy like assets at this point in the game. But at some point, he will be able to, and that's another thing you can actually like activate and replay so you can purchase stuff if you like uh you you play the replay of it and you you press the you have to press the, the it's default tab the action key you have to press it in like a kind of specific way to make it work but yeah you can buy it and as long as you have enough money you'll be able to buy it you won't actually lose your money though so you buy it for free and you teleport to that location which is quite handy for going fast in a lot of situations yeah those are the sort of two uses we're going to use it to teleport and we can also buy the asset without worrying about any money um, because usually, obviously, in this game, you're supposed to do like a bunch of side stuff to get enough money to buy the, all the assets that you need. Uh, we're not going to do any of that, so it means that the uh, the routing for money and stuff is actually quite tight. We can't go and go any kind of shopping sprees or anything like that. Um, right, next up uh, is thank you, thank you. Yeah, we we made it across the bridge, so that's good. Uh, cops are throwing spike strips at me, even though I haven't got a wanted level. That's just the way this game is. Sometimes it just doesn't doesn't let you do anything. Um, so yeah, Death Row. Uh, this is the mission, fun fact, that I was actually stuck on when I was a kid. Never beat it when I was playing PS2. Um, and the idea is that we have to save lands from the scrapyard. Um, so the scrapyard is, again, all the way at the other side of the map. Um, and we need to get a helicopter. So usually we'd have a heli for this mission, like in vanilla. But as we said, like we can't really use a heli for those previous missions. Um, I'm going to stop by and get armor really quick. Because uh, even though Lance's health is like slowly going down, we have plenty of time to save him. If he gets beaten up a bit, so what? You know, at least at least we're saving him at the end of the day. Um, so instead, uh, a nice little handy-dandy addition. Um, if any of you guys have played Vice City Stories, you'll know what I'm talking about here. Uh, there is actually, if we do a bit of parkour to get up to it, um, there is actually a, uh, on top of the police station here, with a nice little jump. Ooh, okay, that was, that's a nice. really hard jump. Yeah, that is like, you have to jump three seconds later than you actually, you know, than you think you have to. But yeah, there's a police maverick here, Vice City uh, Police Department uh, helicopter. So this isn't here in the original game, but uh, thankfully it's here in the mod so we can use it. And it, it's, it's it's in VCS, I believe, right? That's the reason it's there now? It's, it's like a VCS reference? Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, Rob put a lot of different um, sort of like anti-speedrun things in here. Um, there's a number of different ways that we can like sort of fly in and fly out, which is the idea to skip a lot of the uh, gunfights. Um, if you go and you fly and land in like the regular place, you will get absolutely destroyed because there is like guys with M60s on the rooftop that are designed to basically shoot you down if you land there with a helicopter. Like the entire reason they exist is because when I played this for the first time, um, I just flew in and out and Rob wasn't very happy with that in my casual playthrough. So he just put a load of guys there that will destroy you if you try and do that a second time. Um, so I'm fun doing it really safe. Yes, yeah, sorry, go, go ahead. Yeah. I was just going to say, fun fact, in the code, they're actually referred to as T-Bed Roof Guys. There you go, <laughs> yeah. 
plenty of different cool little Easter eggs. Yeah, so um, M8 actually does a strat here where you can park up on like a bit of, it's basically just like garbage, right? Um, and you can park up on there, but it's quite risky. So obviously we're not doing a lot of ris risky stuff in a marathon. Instead, I just park all the way at the back corner, um, which is a lot safer. Sure. Certainly not safe yes. by any means, but nice safer. To see you sure. too. Mm -hmm. Let's get out of here. Yeah, I think the trash pile thing is kind of funny because like, it's you can walk up like very steep surfaces in this game as if it's almost nothing. Yeah. So if you park it, if you land it just right, then you can walk up like a specific like area of the garbage pile. Also, uh, your helicopter is gone. My bad. helicopter is that bad. That is really bad. Hello, gentlemen. Uh, okay, so usually getting out of this compound is uh, terrible. It's even worse in Titan Vice. Let me tell you. Uh, because, fun fact, uh, there is actually a spawn of guys with M60s at the hospital waiting for you. Um, and they are designed to like just nuke you the second you get there. So, new plan, I'm gonna go to the downtown uh, Vice City Police Headquarters and hopefully grab a... Uh, if these guys don't mess me up too much. And hopefully grab a helicopter. Um, I think those guys will still be there, but yeah, this is the best like... Oh my god, okay. Yeah, this is why you don't want to lose your heli here. Um, if you're wondering why it despawned, it was actually technically my fault. Um, if you are flying and you block the... This guy is just absolutely destroying me. He's actually smurfing on me. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, so the reason my heli despawned is because I blocked the driver's side door as I went down. And uh, that actually marks the vehicle for despawn for some reason if you do that. So, yeah, got to be got to be careful with that. I should have re-entered it. That's technically my fault. So, yeah, if this guy doesn't destroy me too much, um, I'll hopefully be able to... Okay. Lance, get out. We're going this way. Ooh. Okay, we should be relying on Lance's AI is never fun. Yeah, there are ways to manipulate uh, Lance's AI to make sure that he follows you. One of them is holding sprint because he always sprint after you. You see, otherwise he like jogs. And there's like a number of routes you can take so that he doesn't get stuck. Um, that's the main thing. Okay, so mm. those guys might be there. In which case, because um, usually if you were they to fly will. over, yeah, I mean the developer knows. So, oh god, what do I even do here? Do I just try and nuke them with the M60, or do I just fly and try and land? Is it of a cloak? No, I have cherry poppers. God, oh. okay. Well, there's a, there's a nice rooftop from which you can do stuff from. I think I'm just gonna, honestly, I'm just gonna try and blow them up with the M60. I think it's my by any chance. Yeah. Okay. Watch okay. out for the guy in the other corner. Oh, what is he? I've never seen that guy in my life! <laughs> okay, are we good? We're good. Okay, thank God. Hey. This is usually not supposed to be a difficult mission, but of course, you know, like uh, the way it goes, you know, sometimes like that. Lance is saved. Yay, I guess. We don't like Lance in this. All right. So speaking of missions that are, you know, like usually not supposed to be difficult, this mission is supposed to be difficult. This is extremely difficult, actually. Um, I'm going to get some armor to be safe. I think it's probably a good idea uh, nearby. I'm going to go to Printworks and pick some up. Um, so this is like the big mission where it like kind of turns in the story. So you basically like there was a drug deal gone wrong You need to figure out who like stole the merchandise and stole the money off you and, like who ambushed it basically We figure out excuse me that it's actually uh, Diaz who did that so now we're gonna go and kill Diaz and all of his goons and we're gonna take um, Control of his mansion and then we sort of enter like the second act of the game uh, Which is like buying properties and all that kind of stuff um the issue with, with this mission in Titan is that, I'll just take this call while I'm here, why not? Um, in Titan is that pretty much like everyone has like stupidly overpowered weapons. So any of the guys that you, that you have to fight, uh, they can kill you in like two or three shots, even with the amount of health that I have right now. So yeah, it's, it's always a good amount of fun. And we also have Lance with us and Lance dies in two shots, so. If he decides to run off and start trying to go Rambo on everyone, we'll just fail the mission repeatedly. So yeah, it can be uh, mm -hmm. a little annoying, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, I'm going to re-enter that. Just, ah, I don't need to. I'm fine. It's already despawned once. What could <laughs> possibly go wrong? No, it should be fine. <laughs> Famous last words. Famous last words, yeah. All right, so... Yeah, this mission is definitely... I would, I would consider it to be one of the hardest ones in Titan Voice. Yeah, definitely. So, as I say, all these guys here have ridiculously overpowered weapons, so I'm just going to sort of pick them off as I go. Uh, as you can see, the M60 has, like, it's very overpowered as well. Um, so, yeah, we're going to basically sort of take our time, go through. Uh, there's a guy here that's waiting for Lance. Lance runs down here, so we need to make sure he's fine. Oh, God, see, that guy absolutely Ooh. destroyed me. Not great. Um, got him. Come on past this guy here. He doesn't shoot me too much. 
Uh, there's health here, but there's also guys waiting for you if you try and get them. So I'm going to try and sort of edge my way in here. Ooh, okay, that's everyone. Yep. Okay, now I die in two bullets. <laughs> so let's see how this goes instead of three. Um, yeah, easy. So there's one guy here that you can sort of shoot in the leg if I can. There we go. And one guy here. This guy is all right. He only has like a regular weak weapon, thankfully. But then this guy has an M60, so he will destroy me if I'm not careful. Good. Then we go up here. There are two guys. One. Oh, go one, two. D this is not the time to be missing shots, Ben. Come on. Uh, then there is one, two. And then what we're gonna do is there is actually a cutscene trigger that we would usually access um, where like uh, Diaz would spawn and. We're going to try and avoid that, which will allow us to just kill him straight away. So we're going to dodge this, run all the way around. You see a Diaz is here, but his AI isn't active. And we can just kill him. Mission done. Whew! Mm. Goodness me. I'm glad that went well. <laughs> yeah. This is definitely how property ownership works. Damn right. <clears throat> yeah, dying there would be really bad, because then you lose all your big guns, and then... You're stuck doing this mission with like kind of puny guns. Yeah, exactly. It's it's really not good. Okay, so uh, we're gonna make a save here. Uh, I'm actually gonna save on the second slot. Uh, no particular reason. I just like that. It's convenient. Uh, then we're gonna start shakedown. Um, so, MH, do you want to talk about the reason why we save there and like a particular slot and everything? Um, while I go ahead and do shakedown. Uh, yeah. So in, in speedruns, you can't load saves from other runs because that's well, that's cheating. But you can load saves from made earlier in the run. And uh, since replays kind of, they're saved onto your hard drive. So if you save a replay in, in uh, one save instance and you load another save, you'll still have to replay. So that's, uh, that's gonna be kind of handy later on, you'll see. Yeah. yeah, essentially we can use it to like set up replays in remote locations where we have saved the game prior and then just load up our current save and have the replay ready without having to drive all, all the way over there, um, which is quite nice. So this mission, uh, you usually get five minutes. Now we have about three, so we're on quite a tight time limit. Um, so we're going to take our heli. We don't actually need the heli anymore after this, so we're just going to crash land it. We don't need to worry about it. Uh, oh, I'm going to crash land it, I said, not crash, bounce, and fling off again. Can I get out of this helicopter? There we go. Um, so the caveat of this mission is that every single time you blow up like a set of windows, which is sort of the objective of this mission, uh, a guy will spawn with a shotgun who's going to try and fight you. So what I need to do is I need to, as you can see, is right there. They have a ton of health as well. So I need to, every single time I blow up like a specific set of windows to like trigger the next checkpoint, I need to make sure that I also either, you know, like run away from or kill um, the guy who's going to like spawn. Because otherwise they just like, the shotguns are like sniper rifles in this game. They just absolutely destroy you. I'm not going to destroy these set of windows yet because I want to go to ammunition first. Um, I want to buy some armor just to be safe and some grenades for just in a second. And then I'm going to destroy these two. One, two, three. I'm going to immediately try and kill this guy. Good. Because otherwise, yeah, he would destroy me. Uh, we're going to make use of these grenades really quickly. Uh, so you can actually use grenades to blow up windows. So we're going to do the ones up top here. One, two. Should destroy them, hopefully. Yep, good. And then these two, uh, nice and simple, just destroy them. Uh, these two guys spawn so far away that they don't actually attack you before you can just finish the mission. No problem. And that's mission done. Right. Remember when we made that Cherry Poppers uh, replay? We've got six stars. I'm going to teleport away straight away. And I teleported out inside the mall. That's very important. It may seem insignificant, but trust me, it's important. So now because we're in the interior world, none of like the roads have spawned or anything like that. Um, so I'm going to save the game here in this like weird void world. And then I need to get back to the mansion, right? And remember before I saved in the second slot inside the mansion. So I'm going to load that save. I'm going to come here. I'm going to make a replay over the save marker, which is going to let me teleport to the mansion by activating it. And then I'm going to load my current save. Bear in mind, I had a six star wanted level and loading your save also gets rid of the six stars. Now, I've got to figure my way through this void and run to those gates without drowning. Um, so, I'm going to run across the road here. Should be going up. Yep, yeah, good. Uh, I'll take this call in the meantime. And then uh, we're going to teleport Starfish Island inside. And then we can start the mission uh, all within the sort of interior world. As soon as we start the mission, it teleports us outside and everything's fixed again. So, all good. And that's basically mm -hmm. how we can teleport around in a lot uh, easier way. So we get rid of the wanted level. Uh, we teleport to the mansion without having to drive all the way back from the mall, which is really convenient. 
And we've also done a setup for another glitch for the mission after this one, which we'll talk about in a second. Yeah, the important bit with uh, that whole thing here that's different than Vanilla Vice City is that you you can teleport long distance using the, the buy replay. But like with the save warps, you have to be in the same neighborhood. Yeah. And you know, the doors are kind of blocked, so it's kind of a hassle to get inside when you can't see anything and it's oh, also yeah. gonna take forever. So yeah, completely you, you know, you then. teleport. Yeah. Yeah, you teleport, you save, you know, you do all that good stuff. And then you can just, you know, do that with two separate replays just by having another save handy. Yeah, I forgot to mention that um yeah, big thing about this mod is that um the the doors to the Vesetti um, estate are completely locked. Even though you own the property now, it's still locked and it has a big, like, no Tommy allowed sign on it or something. Um, so yeah, that's br I'm busted. All right, brilliant. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, cop just, shameful, like, man. cop spawned out of nowhere. Yeah, good stuff. Okay. Um, so usually what I was going to do is I was going to, like, load a save if I lost all my guns. I'm trying to think if I need to, if there's anything that I particularly need. To think. It's kind of difficult to think off the top of my head as to what I need and what I don't. Um, I'll be fine. Let's just continue. Because um, obviously, like, I don't really want to load a practice save. I want to try and do this in one go as long as possible. But obviously, losing my gun I mean, is pretty devastating. You still have the two saves from before, right? So. Oh yeah, true. Um, what would? It, yeah, I guess I could just save the. I could load the save from this one, right? This would make yeah. sense. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, and then just do the whole like replay setup. Or I guess you already have the replay, right? So. Yeah, I already have the replay even better, so yeah, which is yeah. good. Okay, yeah. so we lose a bit of time, but not a big deal. Um, it's better than loading a practice save and also, you know, having to like re-get all, all, all of our weapons and stuff, so. We'll do it again. Um, I would say we only lost like a minute or so, it's not too bad. Right, so we start the mission a second mm -hmm. time. Um, yeah, I, the funniest part was, is that like, so you have the Infernus there, and the Infernus is like a really good car, right? And the only thing that's really better is the PCJ, that motorbike that I tried to steal. So I was like, oh, brilliant, the game gifted me a PCJ. That's so kind of the game. But I forgot that it also gifted me a police officer right there to immediately arrest me. And like, while you're getting on the vehicle, if the cop is stood in a certain position, he will bust you no matter what. Like, that's why I said, like, I'm busted. I couldn't get off in time. Like, you know, my, my fate is already sealed by that point. So it's uh, yeah, pretty unfortunate, but I should have been more vigilant. Technically my fault. Can't blame the game for that one. There's plenty of things that you can blame the game for. That's not one of them. But if that is the only sort of like major fail for the rest of the run, then that will be, I'll be very happy with that. Because yeah, this run can be extremely inconsistent with how difficult it is, you know. Um, while I'm doing this mission again, uh, Rob, do you want to talk about sort of development of this? Do you want to give any kind of like insight about, you know, how it was to develop it? Like how you came around to doing it? Any kind of like, you know, give us a little history lesson? Uh, sure, effectively, uh, there's a mod for GTA 3 Cup that was made half a decade ago, maybe longer. Uh, and it's something that speedrunners have been playing for quite some time on GTA 3, but it removed quite a number of features that they liked, uh, like the replays that allowed you to like glitch actually... and all of that sort of thing. It's only the main storyline. Um, and I, Vice City's always been my favourite of the GTA games. So it made sense that if I was going to try and riff off a cutter that I would use this game, but then try to keep in all of the things that made speedrunning uh, quicker. And uh, it seems to have paid off. People seem to like it. Yeah, it's a good laugh. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I have control inside of a cutscene. Or so I, don't, I would usually like lose control inside of this cutscene. Uh, oh god, this is just there's so many cops here. Look at this. Goodness me. Um, wow. I'm just going to take this cheater and try and be safe. I can get rid of these cops. Um, but yeah, so basically what happened there is usually that cutscene where the guys like drive out. Uh, they usually have bikes, but in this case they have cars. Um, and usually they would, um, it would take control away from you and force Tommy to like walk towards them. So then when they're driving away, um, you would obviously be like walking the wrong way, so you wouldn't be in a good position to kill them. But if you crouch, then the game like can't make force you to run, if that makes sense. Um, so basically it just allows us to like uh, fully have control of Tommy. Um, as we would, you know, with anything else. Oh, what is that background noise there? Oh. Sounded like a little like shopping trolley falling over or something in like Aldi. Uh, yeah, so we teleported to the mansion again, so we're in like the interior world. Um, I'm actually maneuvering through the mansion here, uh, but as I say, you can't really see what I'm doing, but I'm going up the stairs, up the stairs, turn around, and then we're up at the roof here. 
Um, and the reason for that is that I wanted to get this helicopter, because we're going to use it for this next mission. Um, so this is Copland, and uh, this is very important. Um, will I still have five stars, MH, considering I loaded a save? I think I will, right? Like it, it, it Yeah, I think yeah, you should. Yeah. So uh, do you want to talk about the whole like leaving the mall thing, five stars, Copland, things like that? Yeah, well, I don't fully understand how it works myself, but ah. if you teleport out of the mall at some point beforehand and then you start Copland, then uh, no matter, I mean, maybe if you re-enter the mall after, like, between that time, then it's going to reset the whole thing, but yeah, it does. Uh, besides that, there's, like, something in the game that still considers you to be in the mall in some capacity, I have no idea why. And you're not supposed to be in the mall unless you have a cop outfit in this mission, so you just get instantly five stars as if you're in the mall without a cop outfit, so. Yeah. As far as I know, it's simply because we never left, you know, like, because we never, like, officially exited through the doors because we teleported out and the game doesn't expect that. It still right. has, like, that, you know, like, the tick, like, is the player in the mall? Yes. And then it says, like, yeah, oh, the player maybe. is in the mall. And as MH said, like, during this mission, Jesus, that is one hell of a place for that guy to be. Jesus. Oh, man. oh Lance is on the floor as well. Lance, you good? Lance? Lance? Uh, uh, Yo. Lance? Lance it, he's fine. Don't worry about it. He's good. Yeah, We've all had a helicopter land on us <laughs> at some point. Uh, yeah, there's supposed to be two cops here, but... Uh, I think, oh, I think you're oh officer, are you okay? I need you. <laughs> come on, guys, come on. come on. There we go, yeah, brilliant. <laughs> this is such a goofy playthrough, I love it. Um, yeah, so because the game is like, you know, the player's in the mall because we never left. And uh, if you're in the mall without a cop uniform, uh, it gives you five stars instantly. And that's very nice because in this particular mission, we need a wanted level as soon as possible. Um, because if we don't, then we have to manually grab it ourselves somewhere by like robbing a store or killing a bunch of people, and that's just obviously slow. So it's much better to just complete that objective as soon as possible, even if it can be a, a little risky, as you saw there. Um, yeah, it's mostly fine. Um, right, now we're going to fly to the mall. Uh, again, this helicopter is very useful because as soon as we sort of you know deal with everything that we're going to do um, at the mall, we're going to have six stars again. Uh, you even have five stars in the regular game. And uh, that's not particularly good. Driving back would be extremely risky, but if you fly back, then you're pretty much like good to go. Um, there's not really too much risk to it. Um, there is a very particular gotcha moment here um, that I'll point out as we go. Um, but there's actually a fake fail condition in this mission. So at some point when you plant the bomb in the mall, which is like the objective, um, <laughs> Rob very evilly fails the mission if you do that. But it's not actually failed, it just says that the mission has failed. And then it says like, oh no, just kidding, actually run away before the bomb goes off. And uh, yeah, so it's, uh, it's, it's a good laugh. Um, nice way to troll speedrunners, as we talked about before. So, I'm gonna walk into the mall, and uh, these guys are aggroed onto me. So, I'm gonna kill them hopefully as soon as possible. They do a lot of damage to you, it is uh, very risky. So there you go, mission failed, you left lands behind, no joke, seriously run. And we just go and blow up the mall anyway, so. Now we need to get Lance and myself back to the helicopter without getting shot too much, hopefully. It seems good. There doesn't seem to be any people out here. Good. And now we hopefully get away without uh, too much trouble. Sometimes cops here can just be like everywhere and they can just be super annoying. Uh, but no, we're mostly good. Good stuff. Uh, so, uh, once we're done with this mission, we're going to get into like the sort of, you know, end game of this. The end game is extremely complicated. Um, it requires... We're going to be time traveling, uh, essentially. We're going to use a lot of like uh, very buggy mechanics to essentially tra time travel Tommy and skip like the entire second half of the game. So, Paul Lister, you've got uh, time for like one or two donations, say two, and then uh, we're going to get into some real technical stuff, okay? Okay, I'll try and be as quick as possible. Go for it. We have $14.20 from a tryharder saying, I don't actually have anything to say. I just need a donation reader on call long enough to help me skip a mission IRL. This should be long enough. Thanks. We also have $5 from Soviet saying, good luck to English Ben, and shout out to Poker and his famous pajama pants, able to grace ESA for yet another year. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, and back to you, you Ben. Thank you, thank you. Um, so, MH, uh, you are the unfortunate soul that is gonna explain a lot of this. Uh, first off, <laughs> Boatyard Instapass, go for it. <clears throat> okay, so. You know how you can start missions during other missions, right? We, we, we went over this early on. Hopefully you remember. Um, so, but what if you start a mission while you're on a, a different mission? Some, some crazy stuff's gonna happen. Uh, sometimes the game will crash, but sometimes uh, 
if, if, if the okay so in the mission code there's a bit that says you pass the mission so if you're at that le like length of the mission in a different mission and then you start the other mission then you'll you'll skip to the part where you pass the mission all right like does, does that make sense it should right no not at all but continue <laughs> all right all right yeah yeah i knew it would make sense i told you yeah yeah, yeah. so you're, you're good but you're good this is what happens that if you, if you if you start taxi and then during the taxi mission you, you start the boatyard mission you'll instantly complete the boatyard mission so that's pretty fast yeah i'm gonna buy the property first um <laughs> Brilliant, Josh. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Can someone get him out of the building, please? <laughs> He's upstaging me. Uh, yeah, so pretty much exactly what MH said. Uh, it's, it's quite complicated. But uh, I'm going to basically set up what is called like on mission zero taxi. So I'm on the taxi mission, but I can also start other missions. And uh, that is going to allow me to instantly complete Boatyard, hey, which is hey, one of the assets. Uh, yeah. money, also in all the taxi sound Here effect again. We go. So we're going to go ahead and start Taxi, uh, and we're going to go ahead and start Boatyard. And it's going to instantly complete Boatyard and give us one asset towards our counter. Uh, but we don't actually really care too much. It's going to tab me out, by the way, so if you're wondering about the pause menu, that's why. Um, but we don't actually really care too much about our asset counter. Um, MH, do you want to talk a bit more about like assets and stuff as well, and why we do a Boatyard? <coughs> yeah, <coughs> so to activate the final two missions, like the condition is you need to have... Uh, seven assets, uh, and two of those two of those assets need to be the mansion missions, which we already did, yeah. and the printworks missions, which we are going to do. So you're th so you may be thinking like, okay, well if you can just do a mission multiple times, why don't you just do one of those multiple times to get the counter set? Well, we do that, but one of them has to be a different asset because on, there's a the second to last mission tax block is gone, and they don't tax either of those two We need something else. Yeah. 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 yeah, otherwise the mission would instantly fail. So we're going to buy this property. may seem like completely random, um, but there's actually another instance of the Boatyard mission left over because of the fact that we uh, insta-passed it. So if we were to go and like buy Printworks, which is the next thing I'm going to do, the game would crash because we would sort of set up like an insta-pass scenario, but those two offsets don't line up. Like the Printworks and Boatyard would just crash the game instantly. But it just so happens that uh, that particular property, um, if we buy it, it actually sort of like cancels um, out the Boatyard instance. So that Boatyard instance is now dead. Uh, so that means that we can go ahead and buy Printworks and we're absolutely fine. The game isn't going to crash. So we buy it. We just buy this one normally because this is the last property we have to buy. And we have the money for it, so we don't need to do anything in replays. Uh, yeah, and then we're just going to start the mission. Um, this mission um, has sort of like a... It's sort of like a little Easter egg, uh, like a sort of like a hidden way to complete it. Um, Rob, you can talk about that for a bit if you want, since you know you made it. Uh, in oh right, okay. Spilling the beans. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't have a clue what's going on. Sorry. Right. No, I've I've already forgotten about this. Uh, <laughs> All right, fair enough. <laughs> no, no, no. So there's the the original uh, game. There's a set of steps that allow you to get onto the boat and you fight your way through. Uh, I removed those steps uh, because I'm just that kind. Uh, but there is a new container <coughs> hanging off the back of the ship that if you run past a guy with a big gun and steal his boat, you can then drive to the back of the boat, uh, to the back of the ship, sorry, climb aboard, making some risky jumps over water. And that's how you get Yeah, exactly. So it does actually kind of benefit us because, because of the fact that we go around the back, um, usually, and this is in the vanilla game too, um, usually there would be like a, um, a set of infinitely spawning enemies um, that we would have to fight our way through, which is obviously, you know, fighting through infinite waves of enemies is pretty annoying and pretty slow. Uh, but because of the fact that we go around the bat, there's only a particularly like few set of guys that we have to kill. Um, we have to kill them. In vanilla, you would just run straight past them like they don't even exist. But in this, they have like grenades and M60s and stuff, which is again, like really overpowered weaponry. Um, so yeah, we're going to have to fight them. So we're going to bail off our bike there. I'm going to kill this guy. This guy is sort of like a hint um, to get this boat. You know, why would you want to get that boat? Because uh, we're going to grab it and we're going to, as you see, this is the sort of like hidden way to get on the boat, the container here. Um, now, uh, this is sort of like a weird thing. Um, it doesn't really matter too much. It doesn't, only saves a little bit of time. Um, actually, this setup might not even might not even need to do it. Let's see. Yeah, this is fine. Okay. 
uh, usually what I would do is I would sort of like teleport onto the mainland there. Um, and the only reason why I do that, uh, this guy doesn't, no, he's fine. Um, yeah, the only reason I would do that is because um, if you try and get into like a, like off a boat in this game, there's actually a mechanic where because you like, there isn't any enter animation or anything, um, and you can't easily get off the boat, the game basically has a thing where it's like, if you're trying to get off a boat and you land in the water, um, and you're also like near a jetty, which I guess this container is counted as a jetty, uh, then you can just teleport onto the container. But it just so happened that, you know, um, I was able to just jump on like normally. Uh, right, more Joshimus references, good stuff. Uh, Joshimus found this strat all the way back in, you know, 2007 or whenever he started playing this game. Uh, hold a specific set of inputs and you can just jump all the way off the boat. We still do that even in Titan, so yeah. Shout out to Joshimus. Uh, my bike has gone miles away, Jesus. Officers, all right then, fair enough. Didn't want to didn't get on the bike anyway, guys, it's fine. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna learn my lesson this time, and I'm not gonna try and get off and, you know, immediately run away. I'm gonna shoot these guys that could possibly uh, bug me off. Uh oh. <laughs> Whoa. Officer, he's just embarrassed for me. Oh my god, these guys are just. <laughs> it's just chaos. I'm going. All right. So anyway, anyway, uh, you, you guys, we can edit that out in post, right? Uh, so uh, this. <laughs> Who put edit that Edit, edit, edit. This, this whole thing needs wiping in post. Uh, yeah, so I actually dodged the spike strip there, which, uh, you know, I would rather not get my tires popped, even if it minds falling off the bike for a little bit. Uh, this is one of the missions where we absolutely need to get rid of our wanted level, otherwise we would fail it. Um, so we're going to go, we could go straight back to the print works, but we're going to take a little stop off at the, um, at the pain spray on the way back, because it's just a convenient, it's right next to the print works, so we're all good. Right, um, now... This is going to be a time where we're just going to sit and wait for a couple of minutes. And you would think, why? Uh, MH is going to tell you why, because again, he's got the terribly long explanations. Uh, sadly, it's not a time for donations, because there's a lot of stuff to explain in the couple of minutes while I'm going to be waiting. So MH, the floor is yours. Go for it. All right, so uh, replays are cool, right? Um, and the thing is, they're very buggy. You, you already know this, but they're, they're even buggier than that. So. It, so if you pick up a rampage, you get a two-minute timer. Um, you know you have two minutes to complete it, or if you don't complete it, then you fail. So if you have a replay that's like over two minutes ahead, like in-game time, like in the future from where you are, then it's gonna you know it's it's just gonna fail the rampage instantly. So you can. So if you, if you have a replay over a rampage and it's over two minutes in, in the future of your in-game time, then you basically just have like an on-demand, like on-mission, on-off toggle, which you can use if you you can if you use them skillfully, then you can start you can you can duplicate a mission like multiple times. So that's exactly what we're gonna do here. Yeah. The, uh, the biggest problem with this is that um, in order to like start, so we need to start the mission and the rampage at the same time that we're gonna be duping. Um, we're going to be mass duping a certain mission to get a load of assets because when you complete the mission it just gives you like plus one to your asset counter, right? Um, and we're going to complete, complete it like a, you know, a handful of times and it's just going to give us like yeah. however many times we've completed it times that, you know, just add it onto the asset counter. Um, so the, but the problem is, is that like the only way to like really quickly, quickly start missions and um, like start it with the rampage is to do what we call man duping. It's a bit of a silly term. Basically the idea is, is that you jump into the marker and you just play the replay at a certain like frame timing and if you time it correctly then the rampage starts and the mission starts at the same time and that's what we're going to do and we need to do that five times in a row to get all the instances that we need to do the problem is that even if you do that frame perfectly it's not actually consistent um so like everything in this game is based on like pickup cycles so there's like certain milliseconds or frames or whatever um, you know, f whatever monkey terms that people talk about, like, mm, yes, this frame is, you know, whatever. Um, basically, the, the game only checks that you've picked something up every, like, X amount of frames, right? So even if you do the frame-perfect timing for picking up the Rampage, if the game doesn't want you to because of, like, a bad cycle, you just won't pick up the Rampage, and you'll start the mission without it. And if you do that, then we have to do it all over again. Um, so, yeah, it's like the, both the pickup for the Rampage and the pickup for the mission are completely on a cycle that you can't predict if you're a human being, because obviously like, I'm not millisecond perfect all the time. 
Um, so yeah, we've got about 45 seconds to wait, and then it's going to be sort of serious time while I set this up. Um, because even once I've set this up, um, we might crash the game doing a number of silly things, because obviously like, we're starting a load of missions at instances, which can make the game very unstable. And then also we've got to actually complete the mission with all five of everything running, which is obviously crazy, and a bunch of other strats to go along with it. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to wait about 20 more seconds, and then we'll be um, sort of serious time. So mm -hmm. hopefully yeah, with my shaky, like... sweaty hands, I don't beef it too much. <laughs> yeah, there's no wait time has to be like around 2 minutes, 30 seconds. You can wait longer to be safe, because you need time not only to do all the dupes, but also, you know, if you mess up a little bit, like if you start the ramage but not the mission, you can still continue without having to load your save again. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, we'll go like... Fine. So make a replay load the save that we made and then this is where um, we basically just need to play perfectly and get lucky five times in a row let's do it that was too early too early is fine we don't have to restart the whole thing if we go too early so that's one that's correct but if we start the mission without the rampage then we have to start all over again two too early Three. There is just a mass gunfight going on there. That's not great. Yeah. Go early again. Four. Alright. Five. Okay. That's good. Okay. But it's not over yet, let me tell you. Okay. So, I'm going to fail the rampage again to get on Mission Zero, because we need to take phone calls. I'm also going to make a save replay so I can teleport back in a bit. Now, it's very important that I take phone calls at a very specific section of the mission. I'm going to use this bench, this is my reference, to take this phone call. Because, uh, MH, you might know more than me, but essentially all that I know is that if you like go on Mission Zero and on Mission One, like willy-nilly in this mission, you actually softlock it. Um, I don't know if you can go into more detail, MH, as to how it works, but I honestly don't know. Mm, okay, so the way that happens is like there's there's like there's this pink text that shows up at the start of the mission, and it's like, oh, the courier is coming in the helicopter. If you cancel a phone call uh, before that text shows, then it will soft lock the mission. Like you're gonna be screwed. Yeah. But um, that doesn't happen here, so you're pretty much good. You can just take calls and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Uh, but yeah, so there's a helicopter coming down. There's actually five helicopters. We only need one of them. Uh, the other four are going to get stuck, but luckily the one that we need is the one that's going to um, we're going to use. So we're going to switch. So we're sort of on a timer here. Um, it's not a particularly long timer, but we're on a timer nonetheless. Um, and we're going to go and grab the PCJ because it's just like the fastest vehicle nearby, so we can use it. Um, right. I need to get rid of this wanted level. This is not particularly good. Um, Basically, I need a phone call because all these ladies are going to absolutely destroy me if I if I can't take a phone call. Hopefully, this wanted level goes away. I only bashed like a cop car the tiniest amount. Please don't mm -hmm. do this to me. Yeah. She's already landed. Uh, <laughs> you're going to have to wait for it to, to come out, I think. Christ, okay. This is not good. Um, right, so let me try and think about this for a second. Actually, wait. I think she gets stuck with it being duped. I think. Yes, she's stuck. Oh, yeah. Nice. Okay, thank God. All right, so um, there's a bunch of women that would usually shoot me because they're not very happy with me. Um, but because I'm on a phone call, that basically has a thing to say, like, you know, because you're on a phone call, nobody's aggressive towards you. Um, so that's the reason why I'm not getting shot. Um, also, I'm overlaying this particular, this particular dialogue line. Um, and I'm just like playing it over and over again because it actually overwrites the dialogue, but it still counts the call as being taken. Okay, so we've taken that call, which is a really long call. Uh, it's raining, which isn't brilliant. We need to get rid of our wanted level again for the same reason that we talked about before. And we also need to take another call from Lance um, on the way back. So we, you know, m multiple different reasons. But we also need to get rid of our wanted level just in general. Oh, okay, so that's mostly the hard part over. So I'm, I'm thankful that we're sort of getting through this. Because, yeah, this is extremely nerve-wracking. Uh, it, also, it's worth mentioning at this point, I can't save the game at any time. Um, if I save the game and try and load it, the save will be completely bricked and my game will crash and that will be run over. So this is like, you know, all hands on deck. Like, I have to do this all perfectly. Otherwise, you know, GG, basically. So we take that call from Lance, skip it, uh, use it to save replay to teleport back right away. And now we have the PCJ for Cat the Collectors, which is 
uh, another extremely difficult mission, and I'll let uh, MH talk about that one. Yeah, so I think I was trying to explain it, but then some weird stuff happened with my mic, I guess. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> but yeah, um, you kind of need the boatyard asset so that you don't instant fail the collector's mission, um, because there's only a certain like set of assets that they uh, tax, and if they don't have any places left to tax, you just fail the mission. So if you have zero taxable assets, you insta fail. And the boatyard, you can insta pass it. It's a taxable asset. The print works and the mansion are not, even though you need those to complete the game. And this also gives you, yeah, you know, no no cap to collector. Yeah. Um, and this gives you some time to like chase after them and get to the boatyard before they tax it. If they tax it, then the mission just fails. Instant, um, yeah. It's difficult in the snow, but you can do it. So. Yeah. It's definitely doable, but it's it's really hard. Like even with like me knowing where they're gonna be and exactly like I have the fastest vehicle in the game and everything like that, I'm only gonna have like two or three seconds of leeway to get down there and kill them. And also, there's twice as many people as usual, and also they all have like brutally hard weapons. So as you can see, they're already here as I get in. And I'm gonna pop my bike in a little particular way, so they don't actually aggro you until you, until, you, until you shoot them. So I'm gonna sort of line them up and then shoot them all as we go. Okay, good. Uh, now, and the other problem with this mission is that you also get like a ramping higher wanted level every single time you kill um, a set. So we're going to be driving up and sort of meeting them like as they come down past us and shooting them and blowing them up. But as you can see, the police are already being a huge pain, even though I only have two stars. And then we're going to get like three and four stars, etc. And it's just, yeah, it's just that plus the snow. It's, it's pure chaos, let me tell you. Like... This mission yeah. is not consistent you can die. at all. You can die on this mission, yeah. yeah. Or get busted or anything really easily if you're not careful. Yeah. yeah. So I'm slowly sort You'd of be disciplined. driving forward. Yeah. Um, and I'm just going to stop, like, just before these guys get here, I'm just going to snipe them. Uh, they crashed, which is good. Makes it slightly a bit easier. But yeah, we're just going to... Oh, my God. All right, well, there goes my bike. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. Yeah, speaking of... Hello, bike. Oh. Can I please have this? Thank you. Uh, oh, you're, you're cheating, man. You're oh, cheating. God. Hello! <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> okay, well, thankfully there was another bike there for me, otherwise I don't know what on earth I would have done. Uh, oh, God, this is... Yeah, it's not over yet by any means. But as soon as we blow up these last guys, we'll be pretty much done. And then we'll be on to the final mission, which is equally as brutal in terms of its difficulty. Um, so let's get these last guys. Done. Nice. <sighs> Nice dollar reward, by the way. Yep, $69. Uh, every single time they tax your assets, um, they steal 25 grand from you. Um, but yeah, so instead they just give you $69 for beating the mission. All right, so this is going to be a couple of minutes over. I do apologize, but I mean, uh, it was a tight estimate to begin with uh, for myself. My PB is a 109, so I should have probably given myself a bit more leeway, but it's fine. It's fine. Um, yeah, so this is the final mission. Uh, keep your friends close. And basically, it's on a timer, but it's, uh, it's very brutal in terms of how it's handled. Um, I did try and set up a save warp uh, just then that would sort of teleport me back to the mansion. It didn't work. Um, I might have messed it up. It's completely fine. Uh, we can just drive back in. But I can show you the way that you usually have to drive into the mansion, which is you have to go all the way around. I'm just going to get rid of this bike. Uh, we're going to take the call from Lance that says, like, you know, come to the mansion. We've got, you know, something to do. And uh, yeah, this will be the final mission. Um, so the, basically the way the mission works is it's on a timer. You start the mission, and 60 seconds after the mission starts, um, you land spawns, and you have to kill him because he betrays you. Spoiler alert. Um, and then 60 seconds after that, so 120 seconds after the mission starts, then Sunny spawns, and he's like the final fight, right? And you have to deal with him. So I'm going to run out, and I'm going to immediately run and cower in this corner. And the reason is, is because this is the only place where you are safe from these guys. These guys spawn immediately, and they have stubby shotguns. And when I say, I'm not being dramatic, if one of them shoots you, you are dead, 100%. Because they shoot you with the stubby shotgun, you fall over, and then they just shoot you while you're on the ground. So you're just 100% still knocked to death. So as you can see, these guys are trying to get aggro to me, but if I sit in this really particular spot, they just run up and down the stairs instead. So we're chilling until uh, Lance spawns. And this mission, usually, uh, in vanilla, um, you just chase him up to the rooftop and you fight him and you just kill him there and then. Uh, Rob actually designed a whole section where he actually flies away in a helicopter and then you have to grab a helicopter with guns to shoot Lance down and then you come and fight Sonny. But 
in the same way that we can skip it in the original, we can actually skip it with a slightly modified version in, um, in Titan as well. So it says, go to the safe and defend it. That means that Lance has spawned. I'm going to make sure this guy's dead, because otherwise he's going to be a bit of a problematic guy. So here's Lance. And uh, basically the way it works is he starts running away towards the rooftop, but only once we go towards him. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to immediately sprint away and be at like the edge of his radius. I'm going to kill all these guys, and I'm going to just shoot Lance from this distance. And as you see, he just drops dead like that. And I'm going to run right back to my hidey hole, and I'm going to wait. This guy's throwing a grenade at me. Okay, we're good. And yeah, I'm just going to sit and camp. Uh, these guys, as you see, these guys have grenades and stubby shotguns now, so this is even more chaotic. And we're just going to sit and chill until I think, I forget what time it was. I'm supposed to keep an eye on the timer to see when Sunny spawns. I'm going to give it like another 10 seconds or so just in case. Uh, but when we fight Sunny, that will be time. So I appreciate everybody coming and uh, watching the run. Apologize for coming a couple of minutes over. I really should give myself more generous estimates. But it should be Sunny now. Yeah, it's GTA. Yeah, it's GTA for you, you know. You saw all the chaos that happened. It was madness. All right, um, so, and one more thing before I go, I have a, um, a little video for you that Rob made, um, just as a sort of message to everyone who enjoyed the run, so I'll leave you with that. That is time. GG. Thank you, thank you. So, um, there's custom credits in this mod, but it has DMCA music, so we're going to skip over that, unfortunately. It has uh, Ice Ice Baby in it. Um, but if you want to play this mod for yourself, you can oh find it on God, GTA Tommy, forums. Uh, thank you to everyone who, of course, what does it look um, like? came and watched like everyone behind me. Suit. Thank you very much. Everyone at home, uh, thank you to Rob and MH for joining me on commentary. Um, you guys did awesome. I appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, more than a pleasure. So, um, the original plan with this uh, little movie that I've got for you is it was supposed to be a custom intro in the game. Like, we overwrote the intro file, so I would restart the game and it would play. For some reason, it doesn't work on these PCs, so instead we're just going to play the file for you, okay? So, yeah, I'll leave you with it. I won't say any more. So I'll close the game down, and here is Tommy with a message to ESA. Hey there, ESA. Tommy Brissetti here. Just wanted to thank you all for stopping by, for supporting the charity, and to ESA for having me. Turned out to be a little more difficult than I'd first imagined, but what are you gonna do? Anyway, if you fancy taking on the challenge, why not download the Titan Vice mod and try it for yourself? <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Tommy, and thank you, everyone. <laughs> Lovely, lovely showcase there, English Ben. That was a lovely run. Thank you very much. And great, great skill. I'm going to speed read a few donations that are relevant to this run. So yeah, you go can for it. Yeah. Get all the jokes here. So we have Fresh Ridgie with $20 going, uh, good luck on the run, Tesla Live 14. I, I mean, Ben. <laughs> uh, still wondering you. on how you're in chat and running at the same time. Weird. We also have $20 from Cafe Ella saying, not $10,000, but big man, big W. Let's go, Ben. Thank you very much. We have $5 from Shoshi19 saying, Hey, Josh, you played VCS. You might want to support him with your knowledge. We also have $100 from The Survivor saying, Here's a bit to help. Good luck to all the runners. $25 from Kisanchu saying, I love ESA. It's one of the highlights of my year, and I'm super pumped up for this one. Good luck to all the runners and cheers from Brazil. And finally, for, for you, $5 from George of the Jungle going, Ben, watch out for that tree. <laughs> Thank you very much. We're going to have a quick intermission, and after this, it's going to be Lego Batman 3 Beyond Gotham. So keep those donations coming and stay tuned. Thank you very much. <laughs>